Meta continuing its nuclear bid. The company seeks energy partners in hopes of adding one to four gigawatts of new nuclear generation capacity in the states by the early 2030s. It's all in an effort to fuel the company's AI goals. Angie Gilday from KPMG is joining us now to discuss how hyperscalers are approaching the energy demands of AI. It's, it's great to speak with you, Angie. Talk to me about what you know from your latest surveys over at KPMG about the interest in nuclear specifically, like that that we've seen recently from the hyperscalers and, and Meta, of course, as well. Yeah, well, we know that the data center business is booming, and so is the demand for energy to fuel that, that boom. There's about 8,000 data centers worldwide today, and that number is growing every day. And a simple query using chat GPT takes about 10 times the energy as a regular Google search. So with the scaling up of AI, uh, the energy that's required to fuel that support is really a, a bottleneck. Nuclear provides a great dense source of, of energy, um, but there's also some uncertainties around nuclear, particularly as it relates to public perception, um, some regulatory permitting challenges, and it does take a, several years to get those nuclear facilities up online. Yeah, Angie, I, I guess to what extent does this then constrain some of the growth that is expected or could be expected within the industry? Well, the power utility companies were already between a rock and a hard place when it came to energy before the AI boom. They were trying to uh, support the overall cloud consumption demand that was increasing, plus you have some really aging infrastructure out there. And with all the challenges with climate-related events and resiliency, it was really stretching uh, the energy providers to continue to, to provide resilient power. And now with this boom in AI and the demand for energy, it just makes it a lot more difficult uh, in terms of where to price priorities. Right. I thought it was really interesting that you noted that even though there's all this buzz around nuclear, that's not really where we're seeing hyperscalers be the most bullish. So where are they anticipating to see the most growth to meet this AI demand moving forward? What we're hearing from hyperscalers is, first of all, renewables is important uh, and they're willing to pay extra um, and additional money to, to get that renewable power. But speed to market is also important and they need to have reliability and they need to have redundancy. And so I think it's a combination. It's a combination of uh, cleaner renewable sources like wind and solar. Obviously nuclear is something that is, uh, is very interesting, but natural gas is also an important part um, to provide that bridge until you know, other sources can be built. And is there collaboration maybe between the two sectors when you talk about energy, when you take a look at technology and really what the tech sector wants to see or needs to see just in terms of meet some of that growth demand that they are expecting? What is that partnership or collaboration? I guess, how could they be better working together then to achieve some of these goals in tandem? Well, that's a great question. And I think this is, is really a watershed moment for us. Uh, we have always um, wanted to accelerate uh, our energy um, uh, sources here in, in the United States. But the big question has been who pays for that? Does that cost get passed on to the regular consumer? And what we're seeing in this survey is energy companies are, are willing to provide that and tech companies are willing to, to pay. So I think there's a really good opportunity for collaboration between energy providers, uh, tech companies and the regulators. And it just, it's more about working uh, more collaborative to, together, understanding where that load um, is needed and what that capacity uh, is going to be. Angie Gilday, great to have you here on Yahoo Finance, KPMG's U.S. energy leader. Thanks so much.